Hello everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin on a Monday. It is the 17th of July. We're officially halfway over uh, all the days of the month of July, <laughs> I would say at this point. It is crazy how fast this goes. Um, all this fun that we're having, you guys, this weekend was my brother's wedding. So in case you've reached out to me or signed up for classes, I'm still in the midst of replying to everybody. Uh, we had, oh, so we do have a little honey running around here and Tigger's in here as well, you guys. So you might see them in the background. You might get a little spotting of the kittens. Um, so the wedding went good and he's all married and now it's all all it's all over about the shouting right <laughs> so uh, so it was good it was beautiful um, I do have some pictures I can share with you guys just to show you what it was all about um, I am very happy I found a dress in my closet that was the right color to match the attire and I fit right in so that was good <laughs> I had a different dress in my head figured out for the whole last like three months that I had in my closet and when I was going through it, I'm like, oh, well, I have one that actually I forgot that I bought a while back and it fit and I'm like, it works. So I have some pictures I'll share with you guys. So let me turn the volume off on my phone. Um, lots of stuff, you guys. <laughs> it feels weird to finally be like not kidding in a week. Like this week, we have nothing to kid up because we worked ahead last week because my mom has company in this week from um, North Carolina and with my brother's wedding they're staying with her and so she was busy so we made it a point to get everything that we needed for the rest of the month kitted up last week so it's really weird that today is a or i should say this week is a design week you guys so uh we're planning to design get earthen textures or the, the the sweet class for august design tomorrow and the monthly class design tomorrow so tomorrow is a big design day and then diane is over i think on thursday and we're gonna, or for Wednesday, one of the two days, and we're gonna work on ink, paper, scissors. And I'm so excited because we did get Let's Just Stamp designed last week, which was awesome. And we got the, it's gonna be called a Winter Wonderland stamp stack designed. So we've got a lot of designing in the last like week and now into the next week, which is awesome. All right, let me get into my channel so I can make sure I give myself the thumbs up. So you guys, if you see the picture like that, well, actually it's live now, but it, um, I have to upload the correct cover photo to the class. Um, the one that Kelly had made for me was too big. And so I need to make a new one or have her make a new one, but we're here. doesn't matter. We're here. It doesn't matter what the cover photo looks like right now. So, um, but yeah, lots of people already here with us. So let's say hi real quick to everybody. Hi, Mary Lemke checking in for the fun. That's awesome. Hi, Susan Bellamy from Florida. Hi, Patty Wright monitoring the class. You can't stay away from me. <laughs> I love it. You can't stay away. Well, hopefully you get some entertainment in the background while the cats are, or the kittens are running around. Hi, France Eldridge from Edwardsburg, Michigan. There's Barbara Godby from Hot, 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 North Carolina. Welcome. Hi, Patricia Settle. Hi, Mary Carls. Long time no see. So Mary Carls, I don't know if you realized, <laughs> but mom and I didn't realize it. Oh, so for the ceremony, Logan walked my mom and um, me down the aisle and sat us on the left-hand side. <laughs> and and then my mom kept sitting there. We we talked to a few people. Then I helped out with some something. I don't remember what I helped out with. But then I left my mom kind of sitting there by herself. And my dad comes up to me and he says, why is your mom sitting on the bride's side? She should be sitting on the groom's side. And so we're like, oh, yeah, I guess we have to move over to the other side. <laughs> So, so we moved over and it was all good. But in the meantime, we got to talk to Mary and Gary Carls, which was awesome. Hi, Sarah Mitchell. Hi, Donna Grushke. Uh, hi, Deb Norman from um, Iowa. Beautiful temps and low humidity. Yes, you guys, we had, we had a, a, I got a plastic sheet here on the floor. Hang on. I was knocking my feet on this and I was like, what is that all about? Um, we had beautiful weather here all weekend. It was great. Saturday, no rain until the evening. And then yesterday we had a, a thunderstorm, but that we need the rain so bad. And it helped to cool it down a little bit. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Hi, Cindy Hutchings. Oh, you're getting a pedicure while you watch. I love it. <laughs> I got my pedicure last Wednesday with mom. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Oh, hi, Sherry Martin. Long time no talk. Hi, Connie Moore. Hi, Kat Fronick. Hi, Laura Sullivan. 
Um, yes, you see several paper pumpkins behind me. They are July, actually, not June. Um, so I am still waiting for Veronica Montoya to connect with me for payment on the one paper pumpkin I have left for June. She said she wanted it, so I'm not going to offer it. But what's behind me, there are actually four paper pumpkins for July, and I have an April. The bottom one is April yet. Uh, so if anybody's interested, I'm glad you asked because you guys know if you see paper pumpkins behind me, that means that they're available. Uh, so they are for, for July, actually. So in case anybody's looking for July, please message me and we'll figure that out. Um, hi, Jean Terwilliger, going to watch while you work. I love it. <laughs> That's good. You can listen and multitask at the same time. Uh, we, you were on the other side and the usher made us move over. To, yeah, so at the end, you guys... The, the seating, uh, so the ceremony took place in a, a wheat field, basically. Uh, there's a wind tower at the base, and so that's gravel. And so my dad and Tyler and a, another helper put the bales of straw and wood beams out for people to sit on. And then on Saturday, Tyler and myself and my brother, Tom, um, we decorated the, the they're 12 foot by like one foot. Um, beams like or like boards and we covered them in plastic of navy navy color so that they match the wedding and so it my dad like estimated there were 12 of these six and six 12 beams or these 12 boards and you there were about six to seven people sitting on each one so that equated to about 72 people well there was more than 72 people there and so we had to pull in chairs and there was probably about 90 or 85 people that came to the ceremony 85 people that came to the ceremony um, in the middle of the wheat field <laughs> um they had four uh like not golf carts but like outdoor su um atv type things like like we call them a rustler uh, they're like a ranger and so we had four drivers and tyler was a driver and they were shuttling people back and forth from my parents farm to the wheat field uh and so mary at the end there wasn't an open spot so it, <laughs> so i would say there were more people from the groom side there so a lot of people from the groom side ended up on the bride side and that's just how it worked because we were out of spots to sit so it was good though. Um, hi, Francis Rodriguez. You're perfectly on time. I love it. Gwen Petrashek, <laughs> your check arrived. I remember seeing the envelope, but I can't find the envelope. So I was going to talk to you about that. I was going to say a little prayer to the little baby Jesus to find the, um, <laughs> to find the envelope. Uh, uh, I have a customer. Her name is Elaine. And whenever we lose anything in class, she always says the prayer, little baby Jesus lost and found found, please bring whatever it is around. And usually within five to 10 minutes, it comes around. It's amazing how it works like that. Or I do the prayer to St. Anthony. Like my mom always says, oh, pray to St. Anthony if you've lost something. That one doesn't work so much. But so go ahead. I, I, I remember seeing your check in and I remember seeing the envelope, which I knew was the check, but I don't know where it is now. So I'm still looking for it. <laughs> Just so you know, I think it did arrive. Um, hi, Cindy Bassett. Hi, Mary Jean Kiebert. Uh, there we go. So hi, Hilda now. All right, so we got all our welcomes in. You guys, as long as I'm at it, I'm going to do roll call really quick. Um, I've got the book in front of me, and I've got it open to the page right now. And so we're going to just welcome everybody to the class, which is the Color and Contour Let's Just Stamp class. You guys, we have a big class. Oh my goodness, so many people are taking this class with me today. Um, and one person, well, well sure. Christy, I'm trying to remember how to spell your name. It's a different name for me. Uh, Wil Wiltger, I think. W-I-L-T-J-E-R. If I miss, I think that's correct. So she signed up over the weekend and I didn't have my book with me. I kind of left it in the, like, by the wayside <laughs> because we had lots of other things to worry about. Uh, so, but I'm going to do roll call and then I'll tell you and show you some pictures from the wedding, you guys. Uh, so we have 56 people who are taking this class with me today, which is awesome. Amazing. Uh, Diane Bogenhagen is doing this class in person tomorrow night. So in case anybody would like to get in on this class in person, um, or if anybody would still like to sign up via the online version, reach out to me because Diane sometimes makes extra kits and I could always get those in the mail to you for um, her basically. Okay, so we have Julie Bierschbach, Karen Wettstein, Jean Terwilliger, Karen Cotton, Becky Gandolfo, Lori Kaiser, Sarah Merchant, Vicki Rodriguez, Christina Bernards, Jenna Helms, Angela Knutson, Sherry Everett, Sandy Wicklander, Jeannie Parker, Jeannie Parker, <laughs> the, the cur got caught in my back of my throat, Shirley Malarkey, Francis Rodriguez, uh, Donna Gruski, Carolyn Ketchmark, Mary Lemke, Susan Bellamy, 
Barbara Barco, Karen Woods, Kathy King, Mary Carls, Judy Bobo, Susan Ray Hendricks, Angelique McClendon, Don Ablett, Kara Berg, Karen Stagg, Shauna Burns, Vera Anderson, Pat, Tom Pat Thomas, Laura Sullivan, Joanne Kahn, Carla Lake, Lori Baxter, Cindy Runtree, Nedra Dover, Wanda Zerman, and Wanda, welcome. This is your very first class. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Marsha Kulibert, and then Julie Block, also Julie's very first class. So very awesome. Wanda signed Julie and her up to take the class together for the first time. I love it. Uh, Randy Thompson, Gwen Petrashek, Carol Selinski, Feline Mays, Sharon Rush, Pat Settle, Linda Scott, uh, Barbara Godby, Cheryl Stewart, Joanne Brutch, and Joanne, this is your first class as well. Uh, taking the class with Cheryl Stewart, yay. Cheryl Thomas, <laughs> you guys, I got my Cheryl fixes in this class. Uh, France Eldridge, Elridge, sorry, I put an extra letter in there, Elridge. Sharon Davis, and then Christy Wiltshire. I think that's your name, Christy. I was going off a of memory and there was the T and the L and the J and that like not that particular that order that get me <laughs> that gets me. So you guys awesome. So 56 people. I'm so happy I prepped for 56 for this class. We guessed 56 way back when we only had 24 signed up. And I was just relieved going into this week thinking, oh my gosh, I had one left on Saturday and then Christy signed up for it. And then it's like, okay, well, I don't have any left per se, but potentially Diane might in case anybody's still on the fence about taking the class. But whew, so yay. All right, so that's our roll call. We'll do the drawing for the door prize later on. So I'm not, I didn't write numbers. I forgot to write numbers, but we'll get the numbers on there in a bit. Um, if anybody um, is interested, just don't hesitate to email me or reach out. Um, hi, Lisa Spacek. Uh, we'll get, we'll figure it out is what we always do. Um, you guys, so this is my to-do list. This is what the list I made up last night. <laughs> and I'm like, look at me. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things on my list done. Um, the next thing that I'm working on is write textured florals. So anybody taking um, this textured floral class with me on Thursday night um, or with Rose, if you're in Canada, um, hi, Jean Maxwell. If you're taking this class with us on Thursday or if you still want to get signed up, you guys, I have about 15 kits left for this class or 15 for this class. So I'm in the process of writing the tutorial. I have them all written for these three, but I'm just about done with this one. So Karen, what sign if you're watching? I'm about done writing the tutorial and I will get it off to you for proofreading. But fun cards, you guys. Uh, and you need flowers and some sentiments for this class. So pretty nice. Uh, you guys, in tomorrow's class with Rose, um, she's doing this really cool technique in case you want to watch Rose. I kitted up these cards for in the U S and she kits up in Canada for her technique club. And this one's a slight variation to hers. She did a copper clay undertone where I did moody mauve with wild wheat, but the, um, the technique is super cool. You guys, if you've never done embossing with dyes, this is what she's gonna show you how to do tomorrow. Super cool. Um, I've set mine up so that that slides underneath there and it kind of helps hold it. But she's gonna do um, embossing with dyes. Last month she did partial embossing. This month she's doing embossing with dyes. This is actually a dye that gave it this pattern. You guys, super cool. So make sure to catch Rose's class tomorrow. Um, I do have one left in case anybody's interested. This is one of the three cards and the other two cards um, they feature the Crafting With You bundle, and I will show them to you momentarily here in case you want to see. There's, so I have one of this class left, and um, the tutorial's all written, so this is one of the cards. It has the scissors um, and a sentiment on it, and then the other card is the big sh or the um, stamp and cut emboss machine um, that, that's running it through it. So if you want that, I still have one of those left that is all kitted up ready to go. And then as long as I'm showing you guys, I have, I think I have about 15 or 20 of the ink paper scissors that we've kitted up for that are ready to go in case anybody wants to sign up for this. Now this one, you guys is coming up on Monday night. So it's, it's a week from tonight and it'll be really cool. This is a little card inside of a card. So I have space at this class in case anybody wants to sign up for these beautiful cards featuring season of chic. So, all right. So that's Monday night. And then the, um, just to kind of recap, um, mystery card night, mystery card night is tonight, you guys. 
Um, I moved the class to be at 5 p.m. because Tyler asked me on a date. <laughs> and so we need to be somewhere by 6.30, uh, which I was like, I can, I think my ladies wouldn't mind me going on a date with you and switching up class to be an hour earlier. And that's like the beauty of doing online classes, you guys. Uh, so if you can't make it at five, you can still catch the replay at six um, and go through the whole, like the whole class like we would normally do. Uh, so I will be live at five. So basically we wrap up this class and then it'll be a couple hours later, we'll do the mystery card night. And um, I do have it on my list, you guys. I do have it on my list. I have it on here. I need to do the swap card showcase, two of them this week, and then the scavenger hunt video. Those are going to happen. They are on the list. They're going to happen this week. And then we have a used stamp sale on Friday, you guys. So if you're in the Fond du Lac area or surrounding our radius and you feel like taking a drive down, the stamp sale is in person on Friday from seven until about three to four. It just depends on if there are still people there or not coming at around three or four o'clock. Um, it's only in person. So if you're not local to me, I greatly apologize. We do not photograph anything. Um, we don't do this over the internet. Basically, I have about 20 to 30 people, customers, team, like my uh, uh, sidelines that come and bring stuff and they bring it Thursday. And some people have dropped stuff off already. It just sits in boxes until Thursday when we set up and we basically set up. And we start the sale at seven o'clock and then we're done by three and then everybody comes and picks up their stuff sometime between like uh, Friday and usually the weekend and then it's gone. So hi, Jeannie Parker. Uh, so it's like a, a, a fast and furious sale <laughs> and a lot of people come throughout the day and, um, but we don't do anything where we like do electronic, not electronic, but like Facebook groups or posts or anything like this. It's just a, it is what it is. So and everybody um, brings whatever they want to sell. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anything else just want to talk about before we um, get to making some cards, you guys? We have three cards today that we're going to make. And the three... Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> I have stuff to share with you guys. Okay, so that... What I just shared with you... Oops. What I just shared with you was... <laughs> you move one thing and three things fall over. How does that happen? Okay, let me... Oh, and then I rolled over that plastic thing again. Hang on. That plastic thing keeps going all over the place. Hang on. All right. So I showed you the past, like, like things I've shown you in the past that are coming up. Well, I have the, it's not going to be called a Christmas stamp -a stack. So after I pulled out that paper, you guys, and looked at it and I'm like, oh, this isn't even really Christmassy themed. This is a more winter wonderland themed. And so Tyler and I sat down <laughs> we didn't really sit down. Hi, Denise. We didn't really sit down. But on Thursday night, w he was with me and we laid out all the paper. He just, he laid it all out and he gave me ideas. So originally that paper is six by six and I was going to make them into a two size cards, which is five and a quarter by four. And you lose a lot. Then when you cut that paper down, you lose a lot. And he's like, why do you have to cut down off all the pretty side, like why do you have to cut it at all? I'm like, well, because it's gotta fit on a card, right? And with talking with him, you know, in talking with him, we're like, well, why do they have to be A2? Why can't they be a five by seven card? Because five by seven cards mail just fine. Uh, it's not a square, so square cards cost more for postage, where a five by seven is still a single stamp. It may weigh a little bit more, but the way that we design these cards is they're not lots and lots of layers and so they probably still will weigh under an ounce and you're gonna make 10 cards or is it 11 i don't know i thought it was 11 but maybe it's 10 hang on two four six eight ten eleven cards but one of them is a card inside of a card so it still ends up being hi teresa Wrote. there are, so there's 11 cards and they're all five by sevens which they're gonna be just beautiful so he gave me all these ideas of like cut off an inch off of this side cut an inch off the other side and then on this one cut two inches off the top and then he helped me figure out what to do so this card class was a creation of between actually Carissa Tyler Diane and myself so four people put their brains together to give you this stamp -a stack and in the end it's going to be called a winter wonderland winter wonderland stamp -a stack it's still the same day and time as the other as we had planned it's so this is August 2nd in person and August 3rd online and so you might want to 
consider getting signed up for this one. We are going to probably sell out of this class. Uh, we're planning, I, I think I planned for 60. So we're kidding up for 60. But uh, I think there's already 29 people signed up. <laughs> so 30 people about have signed up and they haven't even seen the cards. And so I think once you guys see the cards, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, they're so cool. So I'm going to show you that. And then also Diane and I did the Let's Just Stamp class for August. And I'm going to show that to you now so that you guys can see it. And then I'm going to run through the fishing stamp a stack with you again, the one sheet wonder stamp a stack of fish cards. So that is also the week after, like it's like the second week of August. So, uh, all right. So you guys excited? I'm excited to show you this. All right. So these are, there's only four stamp sets that were featured and they were only for sentimental sentiment purposes. So just sentiments were used from season of chic, sending smiles, something fancy and nature's print. None of the focal images come from here. So if you don't have any of these stamp sets, you don't have to worry about it. Figure out your own, you know, figure out some stamp sets that you do have that have sentiments on them and you should be good to go. So now all of these, again, these are five by seven. So you guys, this is, is five by seven. It's bigger than a normal card size. Um, and so basically one sheet of cardstock is basically the card base. Um, kitty sighting. Yay. <laughs> you know, cause these are a normal size card is uh, like that. So these are, and I will have envelopes for you guys. I will have envelopes that fit these. They will not be stamping up envelopes because stamping up doesn't make five by seven envelopes that I'm aware of. But so here's the first one. Um, and you will get, um, so there's like, this is basically what happens is the, that got cut off of there. And then you could use that on a different card along the way. So I saved all the little, um, side slivers, uh, for them. So there's card one. Here's card two. And again, like there'll be a mat on the inside. So anytime I do a colored card base, then there'll be a white mat for the inside. Hi, Karen Woods. This one. So again, it's the Winter Wonderland stamp a stack. And for this, if you're on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, you could choose the Be Happy Stamper pricing option where you get the card kits, but you, um, you have to provide your own products. And so again, there was like one little slip that got cut off there. And then here's our Bambi with the two ears that are huge. <laughs> He's like, better to hear you, my son. Uh, so yeah, Bambi's got some really humongous ears, kind of like Hunky does. Hunky's ears are bigger than his head. <laughs> so there's another one. All right. And then here's this guy. So, so cool. So I'll be honest with you guys. If you don't like to write a lot in your cards, you're going to have to big, take a big sentiment stamp and put it in the middle <laughs> or, you know, do more mats or something on the inside. But you have lots of room to write a really big love note in here. Okay. Yeah. So basically, like when I kit this up for you guys, this is going to be 12 sheets of cardstock just for the bases. And then each card has a mat and I only get two mats out of a sheet. So it ends up each like a, like 12 12 plus 6, 18. So each class is 18 pieces of paper. So each person who signs up for this class is 18 pieces of paper for me. Uh, so um, when is the stamp a stack? It's August 3rd, Karen. August 3rd, and I think that's my night, my Thursday night class that week. So this is another one. So you guys, these are all, all occasion cards. Like this is a sympathy card. It could be a thinking of you card. It could be a birthday card. It could be a hello card. It could be a whatever you need a card for. Um, now this one is definitely Tyler's idea, you guys. Hi, Debbie Wilson from Kentucky. Uh, you're ready for a winter wonderland. Yes, it's probably pretty warm. <laughs> so you guys, this was definitely Tyler's idea. This is our double card where it's a card inside a card. So this is the print that has the the prints of the animal, like the, um, the snow prints of the animal walking through the woods. And so Tyler's idea was, well, why don't you put the fox on the inside? Because it's like, this leaves you, he's like, this leaves you wondering what animal was wandering through the woods. Now, when you open it up, you're like, oh, you know, it's foxy here that was walking through the woods. And so this is the one that opens up like this. And then it's your card inside of a card. Um, so it's like a to me, this is two bases and two mats. <laughs> so there's a lot going on with this one. And it just was really hard. This guy by himself on the outside was very blah, but to put it on the inside and leave your imagination to wonder, he, Tyler was all over that. He was so excited. Um, and then this one, another winter wonderland. So pretty with the love and big hug. So I have my helpers already die cutting all the labels. Um, we've already started to cut the paper for this class. So we are planning for, I think to make up, I 
think 60 sets for this class. So again, I think this is one of my favorites. He's like, you can't cover up the shadow from the trees either. Like he was telling me um, what to do. <laughs> so it was really nice to have his input. So you guys, the last card he had a really hard time with, I will be honest with you. Tyler was not raised um, observing holidays and birthdays, right? So this card was the last print and with talking, I know I have a new member of the design team. You're right, Mary. I love it. So I got uh, Diane's input and I got Kelly Lamb's input, like two gals. And they're like, yep, you need to do this one. And Tyler's like, you can't use this print. It's not good. Well, first of all, it represents Christmas to him, which he doesn't observe. And it, he said the framing of the house was just not right. He's like, who would ever design a house like that? That is not right. So he's like, He's like, you can't use this one. Please don't use this one. I'm like, so put me into a tight spot because I'm like, I know that you gals are going to want this layout for this card. I know it. So this is the card that actually comes with the class. Like this, it'll be a blue and an espresso in the label. So, but to appease Tyler, hi, honeybee, to appease my boyfriend, Tyler, I designed a different card for him that uses the reverse side of this paper, and I'm going to share it with you guys, and I will include it in the tutorial, but you're not going to get this one kitted up, okay? <laughs> so, and I just realized that for some reason, I never um, took off that, I was in a hurry, McFlurry, I never took off the tear and tape off the back, <laughs> and it was sticking, it was coming up. So look at me, I forgot that, I was in a rush. So this is the card I, and Tyler's favorite color is green. And this is the back side of this. And I'll include this in the tutorial so that it's an extra card in the tutorial. But you guys, this was what I designed special for Tyler to make it into a thank you card. And so you can see here, this is the, the bottom part of that one. And it's the back side. So you'll get a, an extra bonus card, like how to, to make this one, like with the, the stitch or the hexagon dies here, or the countryside dies. So, but anyways, these are the 11 cards and they're monstrous, you guys. Here's some beefy cards here <laughs> for this class. So again, it's the Winter Wonderland stamp a stack of cards, um, all occasion cards basically for the winter. And so you can use them and put them into Christmas cards. By all means, these could be perfect Christmas cards or like thinking of you. I made them all different occasions. And again, an oddball one for Tyler. So <laughs> to make him feel happy and special for helping. All right, then I'm going to share with you guys the Let's Just Stamp for next month. So the class we're doing right now is the Let's Just Stamp Color and Contour. We're going to make these three cards momentarily. Uh, but Diane and I wanted to share the new cards with you for next month. And it features Playing in the Rain. And so we pulled out the, the Playing in the Rain, which is a carryover. So if you don't have Playing in the Rain, you can improvise and use something else on your little... Um, your little square and rectangles. You can use different sentiments. But what we wanted to do with this one was feature each one of the critters. So we have our Tommy Turtle, our Ra Whitney Rabbit, <laughs> and, and uh, Sly Fox here. <laughs> Names on the fly here. Uh, so <laughs> the little turtle's bringing you the flower, and we took just a note from Darling Details, and we featured the gingham paper. So the berry burst, the blueberry bush on the peacock, and then in this case, we were able to pull in those two in-color ribbons that kind of match. And then this one is our, our rabbit, all double matted on the inside so that you can have a little more beefiness to your card. And then this one is the, the fox. See? And you can make this into whatever card you needed, but we put rainy days are better with you. Uh, so yeah! Yes, Hilda now the DSP is beautiful. And... Um, this gingham paper is also uh, pretty amazing too with the different colors. And so these are what we have for you for Let's Just Stamp for next month. So you guys, any of these classes, you could already start getting signed up for. Um, I know there's a whole bunch that are already signed up. And this is that one sheet wonder. Donna loves the winter wonderland. Yay, I'm glad you like them. This is the one sheet wonder stamp a stack of fishing cards. And I'm going to scroll through these. I also have about 30 signed up. I think I'm planning for 48 for this one. So um, probably have about 18 left for anybody that wants to get signed up. We're already in the midst of uh, doing the die cutting and the embossing for this one. You guys <laughs> got to work ahead. Um, we're kidding these up next week. So this is a little book card. And so you'll make 10 cards with this stamp a stack. And again, I apologize. We ended up with two stamp a stacks like back to back, but they're amazing. Um, it just, it's going to be hard in September to do any extra add-on classes because the escape is basically the add-on um, event for the month of September. So 
Um, so this one's a little fun fold. And again, you guys, this one you'll get, it's a product-based class again, where you'll get the embellishments, all the die cutting, all the embossings done for you. And you get two rolls of ribbon and you get the pack of fishing designer series paper. And then this guy, um, a sentiment is what we added on here. All the fish comes from the DSP that you're going to get in your, in your, with the class when you sign up. And so there's that one. Gina Bulo and I designed these together a couple weeks ago and, um, she's teaching the in-person version um, next week, Wednesday, the 26th already. So uh, if anybody wants to attend in person, it's a Wednesday at 10 a.m. Otherwise, I've got the online version for this class. It's August 9th at 1 p.m. And again, if you guys can't make the actual time when I do a live class, just know that whenever I do an online class, the replay lives on forever in YouTube and you get a tutorial. You'll get the PDF tutorial for this class that you can always make the cards when it is convenient for you awesome. Um, all right. Jean sending me an email for the one sheet wonder class. Awesome. I saw your note and I will watch for that email. All right. So on to class for today. Um, if you guys, I just noticed here, this X looks kind of wonky. So, um, if you're new to me, just watching me for one of the first two times or first few times, just know this is my contact information. I go by cards by Christine. My email is right here. My website is here, my phone number is here, my current host code is here. If the current host code never, or isn't working, just know that you can always find my current host code on my website. It's always, like if you go to the events page, um, if you wanna get emails from me, knowing about what classes are coming up, sales, all that good stuff, subscribe to my emails at my website as well. So that's all my information. If you wanna call me, call me anytime. <laughs> call me anytime, just call me. All right, so these are the what we're gonna be working with today. We're gonna to be doing the color and contour class. So this, what is the name of the DSP? So Debbie Wilson, I think it's like One Horse Open Sleigh. Um, and it's not available at the moment. So um, it's out of stock as of this weekend I saw. Uh, so when, I, so Diane and I have been doing, we're on our two year anniversary. This month marks the anniversary of our Let's Just Stamp class. This was Tyler's brainchild, you guys. I used to do uh, beginner classes back in the day, like back in 2016, 17. And they kind of uh, morphed into not having a lot of people coming because everybody was going to all the other classes. <laughs> so, so it took a couple years. And then Tyler's like, you should really do another beginner's series or another beginner's class. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I like to add another class to the list. And um, so, yep, we ended up with another class. I do the online version. And then the deal was that Diane Bogenhagen does the in-person version. Uh, so uh, she teaches the class on a, usually a Tuesday night when I have my date night. So I'll, okay, all right, we'll catch you later. Buzz you later. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so the very first time I did this class online, for those that are new to me, if you are not new to me, you might've heard this before. I did a, I did this class and I talked a lot about what it takes to get started with stamping. And I put the link to this. Uh, thanks, Angela Knudsen. I did a link. I put the link to that very first video in the description of this video. And so it was the Blossoms in Bloom class. And so you can go there to that video and watch like the first hour of it. Or even watch the whole thing if you want to see how to make those cards. Um, we try to do two things with this class. We try not to, well, we, I should say we try not to do two things. We don't emboss and we don't die cut. Because when you start off as a beginner, you don't necessarily have a machine. Like that's a bigger investment to get, but you might, you know, you very well might have that to begin with, which is awesome. But if you don't, it's like, well, how do you make cards with just stamps, ink, and paper, right? And some like your scissors for cutting and a paper trimmer, you need that, but you don't always have those awesome dies. And when you guys watch me do my other classes, I usually do a lot of die cutting and there's a lot of embossing and it's intensive, right? And lots of layers. And we try not to do any die cutting here. So, but that doesn't mean we will use stamp sets that don't have dies. Like in this case, Color and Contour has an awesome die that match, like a die set that matches it. It's got scalloped rectangles, it's got the outlines, and it, it's pretty cool. Um, which, if you have it, go ahead and use it. There's nothing stopping you from using it. But we try to pick stamp sets like this one that have focal images and then a mixture of sentiment. So if like you're just starting, you're like, oh, I really like this class, but I don't have stamps, I need to buy a stamp set. Well, you could get one stamp set and it would work for all of the cards for the class. We do pull in other things sometimes like um, sentiments. Like in this case, we pulled in birthday wishes from the Sending Smiles set. And other than that though, we kind of try to keep it in the family of the stamp set that is featured for the class. Okay. Um, we, we don't, 
limit the stamp ink colors, but other than that, like we just, we want you to have fun with it. We don't want it to be overwhelming. I know we did the pansy patch class a couple months ago and that was very intensive on stamping. Uh, and we're like, oh man, that was, a, that was a workout for people. Especially if you were a beginner starting out, you're like, oh man. Because the last thing we want for you guys is to ever feel overwhelmed with stamping. Especially when you're new, that feeling starts. And it can happen, and then it might be like, okay, I can't do this. But it's like, no, <laughs> let's make sure that we keep it simple so that you guys enjoy the process. And you might not be a beginner, so that's perfectly fine because these cards also are very appealing to people who aren't beginners. Um, they're more like we always make sure we put lots of layers on and we use pretty colors and we always use ribbon and we use embellishments. And so they're still not like they're more than a simple stamping card um, because we like to make sure that um, there's lots of layers and it's just we like to go out on them. Right. So but we want it to be appealing to beginners as well. So we're going to start, I think, with this one, actually, because this one to me is probably the easiest one out of all of the cards to start with. And with this, in this case, we featured designer series paper all from the same set, which is called Delightfully Eclectic. Uh, we don't always do that. We did it for the next month because, you know, for this one, I just showed you, we used the Glorious Gingham for all three of these cards, but we don't always stay in uh, DSP or designer series paper family. Sometimes we do migrate out and mix and match that. <clears throat> so when you get a card kit from me, you're going to get the set of cards that are in white envelopes like this. So you get your envelope and inside the envelope that is going to be everything you need. Usually sometimes if all three cards feature the same embellishments, I would put all three like sets of embellishments in one card. But generally speaking, when you get a kit from me, um, it includes everything you need, including the ribbon and anything, you know, if it's another class, anything die cut or embossed would be like that unless it's a focal image. Oh, Donna loves the color. So yes, I was just thinking about that. This this one right here is black. So basic black mixed, mixed with fresh freesia. So pretty. And it just is more it's striking. And I would have to say when we do these Let's Just Stamps too, Diane is very adamant. She loves the double matting. So it just takes the inside and like puts it over the edge to have that double matting. And so that's what we always do for two class series, ink, paper, scissors, and let's just stamp. Always we do the double matting, unless there's a small exception. Um, and I'm trying to think when that is, but it's very rare that we don't double mat. So, but the other classes like monthly and the sweet bundle class, I don't always double mat. So in your card kit, you guys will have uh, a piece of the black and white gingham, which we'll work with in a bit. You'll have a little white piece for your sentiment. You'll have a white and black piece here for your flower to get stamped on. Sometimes my cutter um, leaves a little thing hanging on the edge. If that ever happens and you ha don't like it, just take your scissors and trim it off. I try to catch them as best I can, but it's sometimes a lot when you're kidding up, let's say 56, to catch that little thing you need that's hanging on everyone. Uh, so that's your one top mat. These two mats are kind of the same, except for one is your designer series paper, which is the pretty white and black flowers with the freesia background. And then this one has the white piece for the inside. <clears throat> so one will do a little, well, in all honesty, we just put a strip of designer paper to match the inside. So big shout out to Karen Wettstein for helping me. She did all the cutting of the designer series paper for this class, you guys. Awesome sauce. I really appreciate that, Karen. And she cut, when, when we were cutting our mats, there was some section on the end and she divided that by three. And then everybody got a little sliver to get on, to put in the inside. So these are all the different pieces of paper that we have for in this one. And that's definitely one thing that you need when you're making cards is you need paper and you need ink and you need stamps. And so that's why I call it, let's just stamp. So in this one, you're gonna need a memento ink and then your stamp is the flower. And then there's also a fresh freesia ink pad that you're gonna need. And that is for a couple things. In this set, somebody was in class the other day or watching and they said they love with the splotches. Color and contour is one that has splotches so that you could stamp those on to help, like otherwise it looks really white in the background. And this way it adds a little texture to the background. And so we have, you are absolutely amazing. We need some splotches and we need the inside of the flower. So I'm just gonna grab all those out real quick so that we have everything. And then I didn't stamp anything on the inside. So for now, these are photopolymer stamps. So sometimes when you get stamps, there's, I call them completely see-through. They call them photopolymer. 
And then another time you could get some stamps and they are they have red rubber. And so when you use the photopolymer, there's no foam here to help support or provide extra cushion for the cushion of your stamp. <laughs> so what you're gonna wanna do is put a, a little foam mat underneath. And so Stampin' Up! makes these little foam mats. They're like $5. I, I think they're only in the online store. And so we're gonna go ahead and do our stamping first. And when you do stamp, sometimes you go off the edge. And so I'm gonna put a little piece of paper underneath so I don't get ink on my mat. And when I ink up with this one, and I'm using a bigger stamp like this, it's easier for me to hold on to the ink pad and like upside down ink, I guess you could say it. And ink that up. So the black memento is a fabric pad where all the rest besides stays on, um, they're foam. And so you could press a little bit harder on the fabric pad, it won't squish all over the place. And so I'm gonna have it so that when I have flowers, I like for them to be grounded. So like quote unquote grounded, that means that like they're coming out the bottom of the page. So they're growing out of the bottom. Otherwise it looks like it's floating in outer space. All right, so I'm gonna set that there. As long as I have the black, hi Mary Schreiber, good afternoon to you. Uh, as long as I have the black ink open, we're gonna put on here, you're absolutely amazing. Now. If you're opting for a different sentiment that isn't as big as this one that we're doing, you could always cut your piece of white here a little bit small. You could trim the ends. You could do whatever you need to. This is just a starting point to give you the, a sentiment for the outside. And now for our fresh freesia, we're going to... Sometimes when you guys get ink pads that are new, they have those little spots. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a defect and it inks up just fine. Um, we're going to do a first strength. So what, the hard part with these stamps, they are what I would call like a wash look. They are not exactly filling in the middles here. So when you go to ink this up, you're gonna have to kind of eyeball. So there's a little oval one that goes to the top and I hover over the top until I get it where I think it needs to get stamped. So. It's not going to be exact, and it's not filling in all the spaces. It's a watery color wash look. And with the dots here, I don't want them as dark as what they would appear. That would be first strength. And second strength is what I went for for some dots. So you always have to remember to stamp off, which is the first strength, and then add your dots at second strength. And I'm just working my way around this label, or the uh, this rectangle. And it just added a little bit of texture back there so it's not so white, <laughs> like stark white. Same with this one. I might do third strength on this one because I wanna go over the top of the sentiment without seeing, I don't want it to be distracting. So I actually did this one at third strength, meaning I stamped off stamped off, and then I went here and did it at third. Hi, Linda Scott, you're making a birthday cake for your grandson, awesome. Hi, Debbie Gast. And so you can see it was just a little bit lighter. All right, so that's it for stamping for this card. Now we're gonna do a bit of assembly and let's move this stuff out of the way. All right, so I like to, once I open up my glue bottle, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I like to like glue as much as I can. And what we're gonna do is these two pieces here, and we're gonna glue the black down. So I'm gonna just make sure that looks good to me. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna glue, oh, I'm getting down to the end here. So that one, that, that, and this one promise as long as a cat doesn't jump up here we should be good to go so this one now there are there was uh, there there's no leaf um solid stamp for like the leaves here so if you want to add a little bit of color of green you can i thought that keeping it black and white with the oh man you guys let's go ahead and burnish our edges here really quick so you've got wiggle room on the the glue you guys it's not gonna dry right away on you so 
We're gonna put the inside, and I noticed I did run this black piece. It ran into, you can see there's a little bit of glossiness there, that's glue. It ran into my piece here, and I will show you how I'm gonna get rid of that. So we're gonna put this one onto that mat, and now back to our white here. I'm gonna put it so that that flower is at the top. We're gonna just line these up here. Oh, Cindy Bassett, good luck with your knee surgery. I hope that it is very successful. Uh, we have Tammy Sikolik, who does um, a lot of help with the die cutting on my team. Uh, she just had her right knee done uh, maybe a month and a half ago. She's just at the end of her physical therapy. It's been six weeks, I think, already. And she's already made an appointment to get the next knee done. And it's going to be the Tuesday after the escape. Um, so there's a little bit of glue here, you guys. So this is called an adhesive eraser. And you just run that. And I ran it right over that little bit of area that had it. And these, you guys, you can get these on Amazon. I have a couple in my adhesive basket. Um, in case anybody wants one and they get cards from me, I can always just add it to the basket. It's like $3. Um, I can add it to your package, I should say, not the basket. All right, so we got to figure out where our ribbon's going to go. And that's a, a tough point here. So let's look at how, so your DSP, when you put this here, you're going to have a flower here. Or if you flip it this way, you've got a flower there and there. And that's, I think, nope, I like it like this. So I have a black and a black center of my flowers here and here. I think you just figure out which way you want it. I think I like that. No, I like this one better actually. So all I'm trying to say is figure out which way you want your designer paper to go and then go with it. <laughs> and I, I'm not quite sure, like I could guess where my black ribbon needs to go on here, but how I'm gonna not guess, this is what I would do. I would prep the back of this with the dimensionals that I need, which I'm gonna put six on, and I'm only gonna peel off the top four. I'm gonna leave the bottom two here so the back's on, so it's not gonna be sticky there. So now I'm gonna put this where I want it. So I'm gonna place it, and I've got the top and the left about equal. So this top margin of DSB and that is about equal. All right, something like that. What you're gonna have to do, you guys got a long thing of ribbon here. What you need to do is cut off what you need. And so it's about five inches would be my guess. And then you're gonna peel off that tear and tape on the back. Must be about even. And now let's see here. Wait, before we do that, I'm also going to place my label here because then I will know because my label is kind of, oh, come on, get up. I'm going to put that dimensional on the side and then we're going to put a little bit of liquid glue. It's almost done. I think I should almost grab another one. This is going to rest right about here. I think I'm gonna go up just a hair. All right, so now I've got that set. Now I know where my ribbon needs to go. And so I wanted it to be like underneath that edge right here. So I'm gonna put that ribbon right here so I can see it sneaking out on the left and the right here. And now I've got that tear and tape back there ready to capture it and like hold it in place. Hello, Mary Ellen from California. You're still trying to get used to the time change. Well, we just started, and you'll definitely be able to go back and watch what you missed. Yeah, you're two hours behind me. So two things. You could pop this up with dimensionals, which looks pretty cool, or you could glue it flat. You guys, when it comes to adhesives, that's like a personal choice. I like to definitely use tear and tape and mini glue dots when I'm working with ribbon. I never use a liquid glue when I'm working with ribbon. And then when it comes to cardstock, I like to use liquid glue a lot. You just saw I like to put that on there. So now we've got that set. But now is where I can pick this up really easy, gently and pick those two off. And now they'll sit down and help provide some adhesive, like bonding from the top image here to the card then you guys, there's plenty here. I don't know why we cut so much of this and maybe, maybe it was less, but this basically, 
I'm gonna make an overhand knot on here, and then I'm gonna glue that right over the top. If you wanted, you could go underneath here and tie it directly on uh, your, your call. So what I mean by that is, let's undo this. Depends on the look you're going for. Like this one would just use a glue dot and go right over the top. But the other option you could do is, you have your pick tool, you could just feed this underneath here. And then you could tie this around which also looks very nice. And you know what, now that I have it done that way, I'm just gonna leave it that way. So all I did was tie an overhand knot on there and then I can just trim my ribbon tail here and there. So that's how you could also tie your bow on. So you could either put it on with a glue dot or you could tie that like that. Okay, so the gems that got used for this one were called the Tinsel 3-Pack. And I'm thinking that mine are sitting over there. So I'm gonna, we're gonna come back to putting the gems on. Uh, you would have, there's three purplicious ones in, like the fresh freesia color. You'd either got two big and a small or two small and a big. But I'd put a big and a small together and put the opposite one at the bottom, like here. Or you could always put one here, you could put it over here, like your call. But Stella, Ella, Ella, you could Stella the edge of this black mat. Uh, whatever you want to Stella. You could also, if you don't know, you could Stella your ribbon. So put a little bit of a coat of Stella on the ribbon to glitter it, glitterify it. Um, I definitely wouldn't Stella my flowers so much because it does potentially cause them to bleed. So I would be very careful. Like I'm just gently going over some of the purple area here just to give it a little bit of color. You could do, so there's some leaves here that you could also do so all right so pretty yay okay so we started off with my favorite one you guys uh angelique's as well angelique is a purple team purple karen wet signs team purple <laughs> so go team purple <laughs> got theirs first here all right so that's one. Oh, before i forget to you guys i have four cards that i can announce i'm going to be announcing the winners of these four from the drawing yay got that pulled together Okay, so we got this guy done. Let's pull this back out and put this in the plastic envelope. All right, then we're gonna do the next one, which is also kind of easier. Uh, this one, the colors are Bubble Bath and Garden Green. I don't know if I would have normally picked that color combination, but when Stampin' Up! puts the two colors together on a sheet of designer paper, it makes it really easy to um, coordinate your colors. So garden green, bubble bath, and white are your color combinations for this card. That is one thing I'll have to say. When you're new to Stampin' Up, if you've never used Stampin' Up products before, they make it so easy for you to coordinate because the cardstock matches the ink colors, matches the accessories, like the embellishments and the ribbon, everything kind of is cohesive and coordinates so nicely. So for this one, you guys are gonna have a kit that contains a garden green card base. So garden green is this color right here. And so you can take and burnish your um, card base. Bubble Bath is your new favorite color. So you guys, I didn't realize this until somebody, Julie Bierschbach pointed this out in class a couple months ago. Bubble Bath and Fresh Freesia are very, like I thought Bubble Bath was more pink. But when you put bubble bath next to the fresh freesia, it, it really has a purplicious undertone to it. So bubble bath really goes well also with fresh freesia, in case you're wondering. Um, you love the floral bubble bath. Yes. Okay. So I think a lot of people are, are loving this. My mom even said she, how much she loves that bubble bath color. Uh, not bubble bath. So sorry. The bubble bath with garden green, the floral. Like So um, So we went with this com combination. There's also a really cool striped paper in there. So we loved to coordinate the striping with the floral. So you have these two pieces of designer paper. Thank you to Karen for cutting them. You'll have a piece of the white organdy glittery ribbon. Just be careful. This is not controlled glitter. Sometimes those little speckles fall out. Um, and you'll have a piece of garden green which is what it goes behind this white rectangle. So you have two pieces of white in your kit. One is for the flower, the more weird shape, not necessarily perfect uh, piece, it's for your flower. 
the rectangle, you guys. That is what you need for your sentiment on the front. You'll have a sacrificial lamb kind of thing where this is where your ribbon goes over. That's your, your matting where the seam goes like that. You'll have two bubble bath mats, one for the outside and then one for the inside with a white mat that goes as well. So we could go ahead and do our stamping and get that part done. So this is going underneath there and this is for our inside. Now the colors are bubble bath. Now if you don't have bubble bath, but you have freesia, I bet you could use fresh freesia at second strength and it would be very nice. Um, a soft pink color, if you had um, blushing bride, possibly that could be, but blushing bride is more of a brown pink where this one is more of a purpley pink. And we are using the photopolymer stamps again because that's still the set that we're using. And so we are going to want to pull in our piercing mat again. And we have our inside flower, outside flower, and a sentiment. So for now, we're going to work with these colors. So that flower has an outline, and that's going to be in first strength. When we do outlines of things, we usually do them at full strength. So just a full strength like that. And I think, honestly, you know what we did? I might have even written this wrong. We did the outline in Fresh Freesia. I can tell it right now already. When you look at this, you guys, you can see it's like Fresh Freesia for the outline because it is not bubble bath. So hold the phone one moment, please. We are going to clean this guy and we're going to bring back out fresh freesia for a cameo appearance in this card. So we're going to do fresh freesia as the outline and also on this one, a little flower power in the corner. And then the inside is bubble bath. Now let's just see here if it's first strength or second strength. This flower is a little bit not coordinating in terms of the petals either. It's off, right? It's that watercolor y concept going on. So you're probably like, well, how do I know how to line this up? You know, it's find what looks the best and then go with it. I guess my question I'm trying to ask myself in my head right now is is it first strength or second strength? So I'm going to go, this is my backside here. I think it's full strength. <laughs> and. We're gonna go like right about here. You guys, it's a card and it's paper and they make more of it every day. And Naughty Nancy would say it's just paper. <laughs> so go with it. Uh, that's gonna dry a little bit lighter as well. Um, it, it doesn't quite all match up, but I did find on my stamp, there's this pair right here that are somewhat semi-connected. And I found this pair over here that were somewhat semi-connected. So that's what I, gravitated to lining those two up and then making sure my center was in the middle lined up and then I didn't care about the rest I'll be honest with you I thought it went okay like like that one's missing a little bit that one's over a little bit but the other ones all seemed really good so kind of just went with it all right so that's what we've got for the bubble bath and freesia now you could always do bubble bath first strength for the outline and second strength for the inside but it might be too light to do that. Then we've got some garden green. So we have to pull out garden green here. And garden green is what we're using for the sentiment and there's some, some leaf action. So let's grab, we need this guy. I'm gonna start with the sentiment because I know that that needs to fit over on the right hand side. The bottom right, it's gonna tuck here in the corner. Again, if you don't have this exact sentiment, something that fills in the space right there would be awesome. And we're just gonna put thank you for everything, like that. And then the leafy thing. So this is a scribbly, scribbly, very scribbly weird leaf. And we did it three times. The first one that I'm gonna do, I want it to come up and over the sentiment to kind of fill in this little area here. So it's going to go like that, kind of filled in that area. The next one is partially, I wanna see some of the leaf here and to just know it's a leaf, it's gonna come out that top, 
corner there. And the bottom one, I wanted the squiggle to kind of come through the corner to fill that area in. And knowing that my flower is gonna go over, and I missed inking that up right there, but no problem because the flower is gonna cover that up anyway. So I'm not gonna redo that. Now, for the fussy cutting or die cutting, your call. If you have the dies for this set, you are more than welcome to use the dies. If you don't have the dies, you could always just, and maybe you don't even, you're not using this flower set. Whatever kind of flower you have or what you're putting on here, you may have to just fussy cut it. So we're gonna just work our way around these edges of the flower just to show you that you don't have to have dies to fussy cut this out. Um, I wouldn't recommend fussy cutting when you have like 20 or even 30 of something. <laughs> 10 is kind of questionable. Like if you've got a fussy cut 10 of something, like that's not the worst thing in the world. But I have, I remember it was like the year 2001. I had just started stamping and I had the bright idea of making 150 Christmas cards uh, for my mom and <laughs> me. 100 for my mom and 50 for me. And I remember that each card that we designed had to have fussy cutting and I fussy cutted like 150 of something and I hated it. <laughs> you would think I would have given up stamping after that, but I didn't. <laughs> it took a number of years before they came up with dies then too, but um, I just remember thinking how much I hated fussy cutting since then. <laughs> so I don't do it often, you guys, but I do it when I have to and that's how I would fussy cut that out. And that little flower is going to get put right there. So that's a little story about the year 2001, you guys. <laughs> Oh, I remember sitting in my dorm room, <laughs> fussy cutting something. All right, so let's work on assembly now. So we've got this pretty much ready to go. Um, you could always stamp another sentiment before you glue this down. If you want to put another sentiment in here, like you have the outside, but if you want another sentiment, I'd put it up here and use a green color to complement because you have pink and purpley down here. I'd use a green up here if you're going to. But we can glue this. We can glue this. Look at this, you guys, it's the reverse reverse. So we had to be very strategic about that. So that's why this is like, um, this is what, I don't even remember how we, how did we did this. This is two inches and that's three. So that is only five inches, right? And so how do you get that card to expand? Well, you put the, the seamstress right through the middle here, right? So we're going to be gluing this side and gluing this side and we can glue this and a little bit okay so we're gonna we're gonna work our your fussy cutting looks so perfect <laughs> well so when it comes to the fussy cutting i do i personally like a little white border so i have a micro amount of white around the edges and i try to curve it as much as possible but like if i have a little not rounded edge like it's a little bit sharper right there i don't care like like some people say, oh, you should always round the edges so that you never have straight lines. Well, it's like personal preference, I, I personally believe. So what we're going to do, oh, there's a big blue ball. Hang on, let's get rid of you somehow. Put you, where am I going to put you? Hmm, hmm, there it is. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, so we got that. Okay, we're going to do this guy. Sometimes be careful. If you pound the glue bottle onto your paper, it might leave little divots, just saying. So I don't do it very hard and this guy. Okay, I promise this will all go very smoothly. So this one is, is actually four inches wide by three, so four by three. It gives you 12 up of the sheet. And then this one, we wanna see the bubble bath on the left, the right, and the bottom. Don't worry about that. It's gonna get covered up by this little guy. And you have little wiggle room. You could go up, down, or just keep it centered however you want. I'm going to go something like that. And that's how we saved. Because cutting paper at two inches and three inches is perfect. If we would have cut that at like three and a quarter or at this at two and a quarter, you don't get as much on a piece of paper. All right, so there's that. Now this one just kind of nestles right in here. So you don't have green on that side, and that's okay. And then this one goes on to the bubble bath mat like that. All right, so we're not done gluing yet. We still have to do this guy. Almost there. Okay, so that will go on the inside. So it's a really nice layout, you guys. 
and you really want to feature some designer series paper, put a little bit on the bottom and a little bit on the top, put a little buffer in the middle, and then we're going to need to grab our tear and tape. Oh, okay, before I do this, I always like to see if I cut anything a little too long, because if it is, you can just use your scissors and trim so that it's nice and flush on that side. And then what we're gonna do is grab tear and tape. Now this is where I'm gonna have two waiting in the wings. And I will have two on the back here. You will need to cut your ribbon in half. So I don't remember if we gave you like 10 inches. So cut that. And they slightly overlap in the middle. So you can go just a, maybe a good sixteenth of an inch from the top. And then you're gonna do about a sixteenth of an inch. Same thing, a good sixteenth of an inch and they overlap in the middle. So this white organdy ribbon is not in your annual catalog. It's an online exclusive. So you can only find it via the website shop, shopping in the online store. And we do pull those online exclusives in for classes. Um, and our general rule as well, if it's available when we do our designing, then we're okay if it goes out of stock. <laughs> then and if it comes back, it comes back. But you know, like, we work with it. If it's available when we design, we go with it. So in this case, um, you can't find it in an annual catalog, but it's out there. There's a whole section in the Stampin' Up! website, like www.stampinup.com. And it's under shop by product or category and there's a section for online exclusives okay so this flower power gets a couple dimensionals and then we're also going to dimensionalize this guy but what i'm going to do is i'll probably you know what i might as well use some of the edge here because there's a whole ribbon track going through oop you went a little crooked and so we're going to do a top and a bottom here. And then we'll leave it empty in the middle because there's a little bit of height going on here. The way it is. All right, so I have this centered between that edge and that edge. You can go up higher, you can go down lower, however you want to. I'm gonna go kind of centered though. Like, so this little section is in the middle section here. And then you're gonna put your little flower on. Make sure to cover up if you have any blemishes. I'm looking for a little nook here so that my T kinda nestles in that little nook. Like that. Love this card, love the squishy, well, the squishy leaf. Good, good, good. All right, so I'm going to go grab, at this point, I think I'm gonna go grab my embellishments. This one uses rhinestones, the iridescent rhinestones. So let me, I have them sitting right over here. Let me grab them. All right, so this card uses, so you guys, when I open up my embellishments, oh, thanks, Susan. Uh, when I open up my embellishments, I like to slice this edge open. I hate using flaps because they get caught. Now I can just easily slide my gems inside and outside and never have to worry about that plastic wrapper. So gave everybody five gems for this one. It was either a medium or a big. And so in this case, we'll do a, a medium and then you got four small ones. And there's two off to the side here, like that. And then you would have three of them, which would go in the center of your flower. So you've got the three gems in the middle here. Oh, Debbie says it's very pretty. Yay, you love the colors. God, I'm very happy to hear that. And there's that. All right, so let's go back to this guy. So that was the iridescent rhinestones. Now, <laughs> the gems that we used for this is the Tinsel Gems 3-pack. You guys definitely know that there is going to be a card in your future that uses <laughs> that uses this Lost Lagoon color because this is I have all that left. And um, we used up, let's grab here. So for that back to that first card, you guys, I have a big and a small for you there. And then 
either a big or a small is what's left. And I put, so I've got one there. And like in that case, it's small or that case, it's big. But I put a big and a small one together there. And then the opposite one can go there. Or if you don't like it there, you could always put it over there if you wanted. So that's perfectly fine too. Okay, so you know in your future, you guys are going to have <laughs> uh, some green action with this one. Uh, the next card uses iridescent pearls, actually. So we can put this in here. Used up all that blue on a previous card. Okay, so we've got our second card done. Very nice, very nice. Oh, Patty says she's going to have to get the stamp set. It is a nice one. I like it a lot. If you like flowers, this is a good one. All right, so the last but not least, you guys, we pulled in Bubble Bath with Knight of Navy. So Bubble Bath is stealing the show away from our Fresh Freesia today because it, it complements very nice with Bubble um, with Knight Navy, and Knight of Navy, and with Garden Green. And but Knight of Navy does look good with Fresh Freesia as well. And you guys, did you notice that is a little bit of a fun fold? So. It's not so hard, like there's no, still no die cutting, no embossing, it's just a different way to cut paper um, to give you a little bit of a fun fold. And so we'll, we'll pull out all of our bits and parts here on this guy. And so layers, you guys, lots of different colors here. So let's look at this. You've got this little strip here. And if you notice, that was for the inside. So there's two white pieces. One's bigger, one's smaller. And you know, the bigger one, it fits with the uh, DSP here, right? And that's for your inside, right? And then the smaller one is for your outside. And that, la that layers on top of this piece of designer paper. So again, we found two designer papers that complemented each other, like this one with the flowers and then this whatever triangle one. So you have that. There's a bubble bath mat for this guy, right? So that's what we've got there. You've got a little piece of this misty moonlight ribbon. Oh man, you guys. If this is your first time experiencing this ribbon, I hope you like it. It's so pretty. It's delicate looking. It's misty moonlight with white and there's the stitching in it. That's so pretty. So I'll save that there. You got a little strip here for your sentiment. And that's where we pulled in the sending smiles. This is what I call an arm because it has an, like a flaps up an arm to it. So you're gonna want to burnish that. That is what's going to go under that piece. And then you have two pieces left. You should have a bubble bath mat and then also your Knight of Navy that you'll need to burnish. And you want to make sure you keep this flap, this folded part here to the bottom because what happens is this arm flips up and then this flips down is how that works for the fun fold. But we need to do a little uh, stamping and we're gonna need to clean up just a little bit because we're gonna use that flower again and we need to use these splotchies again. So we're gonna save them there. We're done with the other flower power. We're done with the leaves and we're done with this flower. But we do need this one there and this guy. He was hiding behind my gems, but I knew he was there. Thanks, Francis. I'm glad you think it's pretty. Yay. All right, so we need our Knight of Navy this time. So we're going to pull in the Navy, in the Navy, and our loving, oh, we're going to do birth. Oh, I have here love and big hugs, which is what I'll do. And then bubble bath this time for our flowers and our splotchies. So let's move these guys, these guys out of here. And bring back our piercing mat and the splotchies. So we have a hard time with um, naked space, right? Or voided, like areas that don't have. So if you look at this like this and you put this up here, this to me is naked, right? It needs texture. It needs something stamped on it. It needs something. It's pretty the way it is. It would be fine. But this is where I have, and like when Diane and I create, we're like, well, what can we do to add to it? You could emboss this. So like if you're at home and you're like, yep, I'm not a big fan of the, the splotchy look around the edge and you want to emboss this and you have an embossing machine that you can emboss, emboss this mat before you put it on here. You can definitely tweak these and um, adjust these. These are just the starting base for you guys to make an awesome card. So you could emboss this if you want. Well, what we decided though is because we were sticking in the family of the stamps, Oh, Angelie said these colors look great together. They sure do. They sure do. 
bubble and they and Stampin' Up put them together here on this designer paper and that's how we pulled in the different colors for this card. So the splotchies we're gonna do in bubble bath. So we're gonna go about the splotchy path and I'm going to see once what they look like at first strength. Oh, they're fine. All right, if you do second strength, they're gonna be so light that you can't even see them. And you don't need to worry about doing the inside. So when you know something is gonna get covered up, definitely don't waste your time, don't waste your ink, don't waste anything thinking about the inside. Worry about getting the area that it's seen. So you see here, I didn't do the entire middle. Thanks, Donna Gruski. They are elegant, they're so fun too. Like they're bright, so like the bright and cheerful. Do a test though. Put your whatever you're gonna glue over it. And if you see, like, let's say I would have missed a section, go and get the section. But if you can look at this, everything looks pretty splotchy to me. And so don't worry about that middle section. Donna, your box did arrive today. I just had a, a moment, I thought about it. <clears throat> you mailed me a, a package today. I've not opened it yet, but I know it arrived today. It's <laughs> sitting right inside my doorway at the moment. The inside, you guys, I didn't put anything here. Oh, I did. May your greatest wish come true. Oh, man, we need to go get that. All right, we'll grab that. That is from the Ladybug set. But we need, let's do this, guy. So our Knight of Navy on the smaller piece here. And you're going to inky dinky do this up. You don't want your flower off the top, but it's going to be going off the bottom, which is perfectly fine. So that goes like that. And we need our, I'm going to let that marinate. I was stuck to it. Good. I was going to let that marinate for a moment. Love and big hugs. It's going to go on our little strip here. Perfect. And then we need the bubble bath back. And we're going to stamp that marinated long enough. Good. Very nice. We'll put that there. And now our bubble bath. Again, that little oval one is the top. So I go for that first and then I kind of wiggle it around. Like I didn't want that way over, over there. I'm going to like, if I zoom in, maybe you guys can kind of see, like I go for that top oval one and now I'm up too high over here. So I'm going to keep the oval one where it is and swing this guy to the left a little bit, get that top one kind of lined up. And I just, I wiggle and and I think, oh, it's close enough. That's when I go down. So that's it for the bubble bath. Got that situated. We just need to go get a sentiment. Now, this is from Hello Ladybug. You called. Let me go get you so you can fly over here real quick. All right, let's unzoom are you. So there wasn't really a complimentary inside sentiment to go with. Oh, wait, wait one moment. I have love and big hugs. That's not going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work with may your greatest wish come true. Okay, if you go for the birthday, then <laughs> I had to think about this. May your greatest wish come true is a perfect one. It's small and it fits in that little, that little inside perfectly for birthday wishes. Now, because I'm opting for love and big hugs, I'm not going to put anything on the inside. And if you're making multiple cards, I do want to tell you that if you go to now ink up again, what's going to happen is if you go and get, so when you stamp down, like I just put bubble bath on to the top of Night of Navy. When you go to ink up again, if you like, you would go back and be like, oh, I'm going to stamp a couple of these and you go back and get bubble bath. There's some res residual navy ink that got picked up and is in this, it's hard to see it, but that would potentially transfer into your bubble bath ink pad. So you always, when you're stamping from a light, you know, a lighter color onto a darker color like this, you always want to clean in between going back and re-inking into your lighter ink pad because otherwise you are going to transfer some of that darker ink in there. It's, it's very hard to see it, but it's when you use the right colors, you do see that it happens. And so you know that it happens. All right. We're not going to worry about leaves and we got our spot sheets done. I think that we're done with this mat and 
We don't need that. All right, so let's get adhering stuff together. So we could glue. So otherwise, like one thing I always do is line this up, make sure that the margin looks good. So we're gonna glue, glue. This gets glue. This we can't yet because it needs to have ribbon put underneath, but we could glue our arm. <laughs> you guys are gonna be like intense gluing right here. All right, then we're gonna glue. This can go. I'm gonna measure this really quick and it's got just a hair. So I'm gonna just trim that little hair. Okay, you guys, this is like the most we're gonna do here. I haven't done this much in a long time, but we got it, we got it. Let's just make sure the glue can hold out for us. All right, <laughs> I barely, okay. I think it's officially time, you guys. Hi, Becky, Schlossnagel. All right, we're gonna grab a new glue. That one's not gonna be put down yet, but we've got, I can get like 10 more cards out of that, but we aren't gonna struggle right now. All right, so we've got that. You know, be careful when you open up a new glue bottle because there's a lot of glue that can ooze out if you squeeze too hard. So that one, the back of our arm. <laughs> All right, we got our flower, this piece, and this piece. All right, that's a lot of glue action. Now, what can we do first? We're gonna do this one. And then that goes on the inside. Like that. Very nice, good, good. Now this one goes here. I had measured my DSP or my designer paper so I know that it fits in here good. Make sure your flowers are facing the right way. That's gonna go right there. Okay, the little strip here. Oop, we can't do him yet. We're gonna do this guy. It's our arm. The arm basically goes right in the middle of our bubble bath mat like this. Okay. And then we have the inside fits like this. And then we have this DSP strip. Again, you don't have to use the strips, but they were, they were sitting there extra. When we were designing the cards, we ended up with little strips extra at the end. So we're like, oh, let's just cut them up and put them in people's kits for them. All right, so that shuts. This goes, all right. Then the flower. Flower. All right, Linda Scott, we'll see you later. Have fun at the birthday party. Happy birthday to him. All right, so then this is going to go just centered in here. Now we need to grab the tear and tape. So we're gonna do our two waiting in the wings and two that are gonna go directly on the paper right away. And it's pretty much in line with the white here so that you just have it reaching that border. I'm actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to put a piece of tear and tape along the front and that's gonna help with some stability with this ribbon and it won't be floppy then. We will have to grab another piece though. So that goes over and one there and I'm going to pop, I believe I popped that layer up. So grab your dimensionals if you wanna glue this flat, by all means, you definitely could. But I'm going to pop it up. And then the other thing is our sentiment strip. That's gonna get popped up as well. So this goes right in the center of that navy, in the navy. And now the ribbon provides a little bit of height. So if you put dimensionals, it's gonna kind of be crooked it's going to be like a uh, diagonal so what I like to do is grab a side section of the dimensionals cut it to the length it needs to be and I'm going to put that at the top and then probably just do a glue dot Ooh, I almost missed it there a glue dot there 
and I glued out here. So that'll catch the ribbon, and because I glued the ribbon down, it's not gonna be floppy. There's enough height on that ribbon that it should make it pretty even. If you wanna trim your ends, you could, uh, like let's say you use a little bit shorter of a sentiment, you could trim your ends, but I have this so that the bottom edge of this is in line with the blue. So like this blue edge here, it's kind of, it's all kind of flush. All right, so we have a, a top arm and then this bottom section, and then you'd have a sentiment there if you want to. And the gems for this one <laughs> were, ear. so apparently I forgot they were iridescent pearls because I just thought they were the blue ones. So I will run over and grab some iridescent pearls. And they're also ready for the class that we have on Thursday night in that kit. So you'll have three, a big one and two smalls, I believe, is how that worked out for everybody. And I got the big and a small. Ooh, it took some putty with it, you guys. So let's get that off of there. Sometimes that putty gets caught on the gooey part. So let's get that guy there. And then I've got a small one. And then put another small one up there. Press your gems down. Otherwise, they might fall off later, so we don't want that happening. All right, so Susan says she loves the card. Yay! Iridescent pearls are awesome, you guys. Nice little addition to any card. And so we've got that guy. We made that one and that one. So when you don't have as much detailed die cutting and stamping, it, like the cards can go together super quick, you guys. We did these <laughs> lickety split. <laughs> it was like, if like I guess you would say, uh, Jimmy John says it's pretty fast. <laughs> Hi, Gloria Wolf. You got the card today. Yay, awesome, you guys. I've been keeping up really good with um, the cards that you guys win. So like after class, now I'm going to announce the winners of these. I still have the ones from last week to mail out, but you guys, I'm staying on track with mailing out those cards. I'm not going to get backed up. <laughs> I'm going to try not to get backed up, I should say. Oh, man. You guys, I always appreciate your patience. You guys are always so amazing. There's always a lot that's going on around here, and uh, it's nice that you know, get a little backed up, but then you get caught up. <laughs> a little backed up, get caught up. So I'm going to try to stay with that caught up thing for as long as I can. So, you guys, what's your favorite? As I kind of clear my stuff out of the way here. I think I told you that my favorite is the black with the fresh freesia. I definitely, I love those. That black with fresh freesia and white is so cool. Now, the bubble bath and the navy are also pretty. The bubble bath with the garden green is very pretty. Just so much prettiness going on with this one. There's a lot that you can do with this color and contour. Um, I know I've done a couple other cards in the past year or so because this was a set that was part of the annual catalog and then it carried over. So it got it's getting more love from us because it was a carried over set, which is awesome. Um, just a reminder, if you're tuning in later now, you can see that we've already shared in the beginning. We shared the next month is Let's Just Stamp featuring Playing in the Rain. So these are what you guys are going to see for class next month. You can already get signed up for that class. Um, going to be a good one I believe you guys I think we already have at least 15 people signed up Mary Carl says the first one we did yes I would agree with you Mary we're on the same wavelength the garden green and bubble bath for Debbie and Susan said the last one good with the navy so all three of them are loved by you guys I love it so let's just see here let's just stamp next month oh man I was way underestimating you guys we have 25 people already signed up for let's just stamp next month with playing in the rain <laughs> wow I just realized that 25 people, you guys. That is crazy. Uh, did you see that? There was 25. Holy Moses. That's a lot. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out, do I plan for 48 or uh, do I plan for 56? And you guys will have to let me know that if you are watching this class and you know already that you want to get signed up, we can get your name on the list. A lot of you are already, like 25 of you are already signed up. So half the people that took, you know, because if I had 56 for this month, 
about half are signed up already for next month. So if you haven't signed up and you know you want to take the class, just let me know to get your name on the list because because by Wednesday, I'm going to already forecast how many kits to make up. Um, so the more I know, the better I can forecast. So I love being spot on with those numbers, you guys. All right. So let's do, oh, oh man, let's put the numbers for roll call or, um, your, Feline said her extreme Happy Meal arrived today. You guys, I could not fit another thing in her package. It was plum full, and I made sure nothing was squished, bending weird, or anything. It just it all snugly fit in there nicely. Snugly and nicely. Yes, those are two words I just used together. <laughs> all right, Karen Wedstein, you are number one. Uh, Vicki Rodriguez, if you're watching, you are number two. Jenna Helms, you are number three. We have uh, Francis Rodriguez, you're number four. Uh, Carolyn Ketchmark, we're giving you number five. Mary Lemke, you are six. Bar Barco, you are seven. Kathy King is number eight. Judy Bobo, you are number nine. All right, then we go over here. Uh, Joanne Kahn, you are number 10. Let's get a little 10 by you. Carla Lake, you are 11. And then we have, let's see here, Sharon Rush. You are number 12. Let's give you a number 12. Linda Scott, you are 13. And I think that's it. I have a hard time seeing with this little like, glare from the light. And so uh, 13 is where we're at. Okay, so we're gonna drop down and we will see who the winner is. Let's pull my phone out here. And we'll do a random, oh, Susan, I just saw your comment there. So we're going to do a random number generator. We're going to put 13 in here. And I'm going to put 13. It says four now, but when I click 13, it's going to come up with a potential different number. Uh, Angelique said she's always giddy when she gets happy mail. Yay! In the purple padded envelopes, right? Um, all right, I'm going to hit generate. Oh, it says number one. Okay, so let's see who number one is. In the book was... It is Karen Westine. Yay, Karen. Okay, so you are my Lucky Duck door prize winner. I love it. All right, so we've got Karen as our prize winner. Hi, Polly Libby from North Carolina. And then um, Susan Ray Hendricks, this is just a note for you. Um, I have your name on the list now. So um, you are signed up. You don't need to sign up again, but whenever you figure out um, paying for it or placing an order for it, just let me know. Um, you're just, you're on the list. That's all that I, I got you on the list, which is good. Um, so Patricia Saddle too, I just saw your comment as well. So I have you on the list, Pat. Uh, you're on the list whenever, um, Pat, you were already on the list and Pat, you already paid for it. So I got to wipe you out. <laughs> you guys, it's so important. If you've already signed up for a class, um, don't tell me again that you need to sign up because I write your name down twice and then I, <laughs> then I get messed up. So no worries though, Pat. I just looked though. You already paid for that playing in the rain when you played for both this month and next month. You paid at the same time. Um, I just remembered just in time to hear my name. Yay. Good job, Karen. You won. <laughs> All right. So Pat, you're already on the list. So we are good. Um, so Debbie Gast, you just asked if you are on the list for next month. And yes, you already placed an order to get the class for free. So um, make sure you have that noted um, uh, so that we're good to go there. Um, but Susan, you weren't on the list. All right. So we have here, I have four cards that I want to tell you who the winners are. Um, <laughs> you guys, it happens about once every class that I'm writing out the slips for your names and it's like, oh, I wrote this name before and then when I write the name a second time, I can think, oh, I just wrote that name and then I, I it's okay, Patricia, it's all good. I know you forgot. It was exciting because you wanted to not miss out on getting the playing in the rain cards. I get it, I get it, I totally get it. I, I usually catch it. Um, it happened to Linda Scott for Textured Floral. She actually signed up twice for the class with two orders, two different orders, which is good news for hers because then I can take her off and use that order for a different class in the month. And so she gets two of them then. Um, so, so it's all good, you guys. We, it, between you and me, we usually figure it out and we don't duplicate classes for people, which is good. So Laura Sullivan, um, you are... Um, officially on the list as well now. So just know that you've already signed up for it once. Um, you're on the list. You don't need to sign up for it again. 
um, but you're on the list, Laura. Okay, so let's drop the camera down, you guys. So I did this class uh, back in, oh man, April would be my guess, April. So these cards here will be won by three people eventually in the near future. Um, we're getting caught up. We're into April, you guys. We we got we went from February like full speed ahead to April. So we've got let's just stamp. These are the cards we made for April's class. Um, you guys just know that I never put let's just stamp or the monthly card class tutorials in my online store. I only put like four card class and more in there. Um, I always do stamp a stacks in there. So like naturally gilded was a three card class, but that made it in there because it was a product based class. So. This one, if you ever want a tutorial from a monthly class or a Let's Just Stamp, just reach out to me privately and I will make sure that we get it figured out. Um, I usually just email it to you after you send payment. So this was Let's Just Stamp for the month of April. It featured Fancy Flora, which just, it already carried over. The main thing that didn't carry over was this Hues of Happiness designer paper. But these four cards are going to be won by four people and I have their names. Da -da -da -da! Drum roll, please. We have here, this one goes to... Nora Taylor. I don't know Nora personally. I don't know if I have her address. So if anybody knows Nora or Nora, if you're watching, if you want me to mail your card to you, just give me your address. Private message me. Da -da -da -da. It's twin over here goes to Miss Linda Hunt, complete with my hair on the back of this post-it note. I saw that. <laughs> Linda Hunt, um, you are going to get this one in the mail. I know where you live. Not personally know where you live, but I have your address. Da -da -da -da. This one goes to Polly Libby. Polly, I just saw that you're here from North Carolina. I have your address. So I will be mailing this card off to you, Miss Polly. And then da -da -da, last but certainly not least, this card, this happy birthday card. Uh, you know what I should do? I should stamp that little sentiment on the inside here. Um, that little may all your wishes come true. Goes to Deb Fitzgerald. So Deb, I don't know if I know you or your address. So I would need you guys, if anybody can help me, I need Nora and Deb to reach out to me. I need their addresses. Either tell them or they, if they're watching, they should tell me. But Deb, Nora, Linda, and Polly, congratulations to you for Lucky Ducks and to Karen Wetstein for being the door prize winner for class today. So um, perfect. You guys, uh, good class. Oh, Connie Moore, sign you up for playing in the rain. You guys, this is my Bible of signups here. If you haven't noticed, I use this purple book. If I don't have the purple book with me, then it's hard to get you signed up. But you look at this. I'm starting a new a new spot here for Connie up here. Connie Moore. You're on the list, Connie. All right. So LJS for August is here. All right. So you're on the list, Connie. We just got to figure out the rest of the puzzle later. And I, I, I always just am more concerned about getting you guys on the list. So I know that I make a certain number of card kits. Um, Becky is, how are the kitties? So that's a really good question. I'm going to see if they're on the chairs out here um, because sometimes they're sleeping out here and nope, they are, oh, Tigger's here for one moment, you guys. Bigger Tigger. Hi, buddy. Oh, man, they're, they're being summoned, honey bun. Hi to you, buddy. Hey, you guys. We've got bigger Tigger here. This is my bigger Tigger. <laughs> there he is. He doesn't look so happy because I just woke him up from a nap. So he was sleeping. Oh, big yawn. He's like, Mom, I'm sleeping. All right, we'll put you on my chair, buddy. Okay. So he really was on my chair. <laughs> no, I have lost my chair. He was on my chair before I went live, you guys. And, uh, he did move. Oh, let's see here. He's stretchy, stretchies. Okay, we're going to move, buddy. Okay, yep, you can go get some water. Oh, man. There you go. He's got a cup there, and he loves to drink his water. So, Tigger's doing good, you guys. <laughs> He's acclimating well to the twins. Uh, he will either sleep with Honey, or then he'll sleep with uh, Little Hunky, and they race each other back and forth, and they go somersaulting through the air, and it's been two weeks now since they've all been together, and um, they're good. They're, there's less, there was not a lot of hissing, only one hissing in the very, very beginning, but there was a lot more puffy tails <laughs> when they would scare each other and come up on each other, and they didn't expect it, and so they've gotten a lot better over these last two, <laughs> two weeks, so, but yes, Tigger, 
Tigger's still, he's still my main squeeze. He's still my, my boy here because he's been through the thick and the thin here um, since last fall. Uh, little Honey is ferocious. Uh, she is smaller than her brother, her twin brother, or like not twins, but we call them the twins, right? Um, she's ferocious and she's feisty and she's just, I guess you would, I would say full of piss and vinegar. Sorry for the swearing, but that's what I would say. Uh, and she has to be that way because she's got two brothers now that she's trying to compete with. Um, when the food gets put out, she's like a little scavenger, <laughs> like just go rawr, 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 like that, like crazy. And then Lil Hunky is just as mellow and cool as a cucumber as you could imagine. And he just, he just, they both start purring as soon as you pick them up. Um, and they are probably racing around somewhere in the house. So, um, but they're all doing good. Um, like the little kittens, they're not so crazy about being out here as much as um, Tigger is. Tigger just, he is by me as much as he can be. And so, so yeah, so it's all going good, you guys. The family's doing good. <laughs> so he's just happily drinking his water in the sink. <laughs> so, all right. I think we did it good, you guys. It's about quarter to three. I'm going to finish writing uh, the tutorial. So anybody who's taking textured floral with me, she's a girl. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's so, it's like, it's like, it's like, I, I, I kind of think, Susan, like, is that what it's like to raise kids? Like, the boys are usually co cool and co like, like, yeah, that's a boy and the girls are like crazy, like, I, drama? I don't know. <laughs> like, I was, uh, I had three brothers growing up, so I was raised more like a boy, I guess you could say, because I had three brothers, so I was a tomboy princess, I guess is what you could say. And I grew up rough and tough like a boy, but then... I adapted and wore dresses and put makeup on. And so I got like the best of experiencing things on both sides. And I wouldn't give up that uh, rough and tough, uh, like growing up in a farm for anything. So it made me tough. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, uh, okay. So there's, yeah. So Tigger's back. He made it back on the table right there. He's kind of taken over the table. Okay. So, for those that are doing textured floral with me to, on Thursday, um, I'm going to be writing, finishing off that tutorial now. My goal is to email it out to you guys before like the end of the day. And then uh, for those that are doing Rose's class tomorrow, just a note, she's going to be live at 1.30 Central. So those two classes, uh, at some point I'll be sneaking on to do the scavenger hunt review and doing some swap card showcases. Uh, so uh, lots of air time with you guys today. <laughs> I mean, not today, this week. Um, and then stamp sale on Friday. So lots of stuff coming up. Um, anything else? I don't know if you guys need anything. Just don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, if you have been emailing me since Friday or Thursday night-ish, just know I had my brother's wedding this weekend and I'm, I'm getting through the emails again. So uh, I, I'm seeing things and getting people signed up. I just need to make sure I comment to everybody. So, all right. I think that we did it good, you guys. We did a great color and contour. Uh, let's just stamp. And... Um, We'll have lots of stuff to show you too throughout the week as we finish designing more card classes. So very awesome. Um, I had the best family ever. I did marry Carl's. I can honestly say that my mom and dad are the best, two of the best people in this world that I, and I was lucky to have them as parents and they are my best friends. <laughs> and Tyler, my boyfriend just adores my parents as well, which makes it even better. And so, yeah, we, we did good. We struck out good. Um, so they're, they're never ending of giving of their hearts and they give to anybody that needs help. And they've always given to everybody who I associate myself with too. So like my community of stampers, my friends, um, my parents have always um, been parents to them or, um, supporters of supporters of them. So <laughs> sell, sell, sell. So it's so funny, Laura. So Tyler's last name, you guys is sell <laughs> S E L L. So Tyler's name so his name is Tyler Sell. So I think that's what you're getting at, Laura. So Laura got to meet Tyler a couple or last weekend too. So he's a handsome young man <laughs> and he's very nice. Um, and I'm very happy to be having him by my side too. So, all right, you guys, lots of good stuff coming your way this week. Uh, lots of love and hugs and sunshine to you guys. Um, I'm going to count to 10 and then we'll end it. And if you miss any of the, the video, you know, you can always catch the replay from the beginning. Uh, I'll count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Love you long time. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Bye. <laughs>